Hi, it's Mr. Mac, and I want to start a new series on the math skills that you need. We're going to start with the basics in algebra and work our way up so that we can use maths as a very uh, efficient tool for describing the universe. In our first video, it's all about substituting. We'll take values, put them into mathematical expressions to evaluate or find the value of that expression with that number substituted. Welcome to Mr. Max Physics channel. He can explain things really well and is a lot of fun to watch. So here are the maths skills you need. First one is substituting. As you can see from the image, boats on the Sydney Harbour and you can see a building in the background. All of them need mathematics behind them. To design an engineering project such as the Sydney Harbour Bridge, that arch has to have a lot of mathematics behind it. And no doubt the engineers who are designing them used mathematics and the skills of substituting. What we're learning to do is to evaluate mathematical expressions by substituting values. And we'll be able to solve real world problems using formulae with substituted value. Before we have a look at worked example one, just have a look at the mathematical symbols, plus, minus, times, or multiplied by, divided by, equals, greater than, and less than. And underneath there are the powers, cubed, squared, to the 10th power, and the square root symbol. These symbols are used commonly and we'll be using them as part of algebra. The first example is to substitute a equals one and b equals eight into the following expressions. And the first one is two ab. Now, one mistake that students sometimes make is by just simply replacing the a with a one and b with an eight to get 218 or 218. And that's incorrect. So we need to remember in algebra that when two pronumerals or a number and a pronumeral are next to each other, it means multiplication. So 2ab e equals 2 times a times b, and then we substitute 2 times 1 times 8, replacing the a for the 1 and the b for the 8. And of course, multiplying that out is 16. The second example, part b, is the square root of a plus b, and we substitute, so it's the square root of 1 plus 8, which is the square root of 9, just by adding. And the square root of 9 is 3. That uh, square root sign, by the way, means a positive square root, unless we see something else in front of it. Part C says 3 brackets b minus a, close brackets, and that equals 3 times brackets 8 minus 1, close brackets, and that's by substituting. Notice that the 3 before the brackets means 3 times. And we usually do the brackets first, so 8 minus 1 is 7, and 3 times 7 is 21. Well, let's have a look at uh, some examples from the real world. You'll see up at the top right-hand side a picture of the Colosseum in Rome. Now, in Roman times, they knew how to find the area of a triangle. And to find the area of a triangle, we use the formula A equals a half bh. The capital A meaning area, the B stands for the base, as you can see in the diagram, and the H is the height of the triangle from the base. So a half times the base times the height will give us the area. So there's a real world formula that was used in ancient Roman times. You can see also Albert Einstein there with a chalkboard having written E equals mc squared. That's Einstein's mass equivalence formula, E equals mc squared, very famous formula. And the cartoon there is taken from a photo shoot where he actually wrote up the derivation of that formula. Let's have a look at worked example two and, and take it to the real world. Use the formula s equals ut plus a half at squared, where s represents displacement of an object. Now, displacement is simply distance in a certain direction. U is its initial velocity, A is its acceleration, and T is the time. To find the value of S, given U equals 20 meters per second, A equals 10 meters per second squared, and T equals three seconds. 
Now, in the real world examples that we have here, they have units. So displacement, or as I said, distance in a certain direction, is commonly measured in meters. And you can see in the question, velocity is measured in meters per second. Acceleration in meters per second squared and time in seconds. So we write down the formula again because we can't write underneath the formula that's in the question. S equals ut plus a half at squared and then substitute. At the same time remembering that ut means u times t so replacing u with 20, t with 3, u, we have 20 times 3 plus a half times 10 times 3 squared. And we do multiplication first. So 20 times 3 is 60, a half times 10 times 3 squared is 45. You may need a calculator to help you with that. And that equals 105. But as we've already noted, real world examples have units, generally speaking. And S is displacement, which is measured in meters. So we need to add the word meters. For worked example three, the formula P equals two brackets L plus W can be used to find the perimeter of a rectangle with length L and width W. Find the length of a rectangle with a perimeter of three meters and width of 55 centimeters. Again, write down the formula so we can keep equal signs one under the other. P equals two L plus W. Always use the same units. You'll notice in the question that the perimeter is three meters, the width is 55 centimeters. We want to convert one of those so it has the same units as the other. And three meters is the same as 300 centimeters. So we'll substitute 300. So 300 equals two brackets L plus 55. Then we multiply out the brackets. So two brackets means two times everything inside the brackets. So 300 equals 2L plus two times 55, which is 110. And then we want to get any pronumerals to the left-hand side by itself and any numbers to the right-hand side. And we have to do this using mathematics. So let's start by taking away 110 from both sides. So on the left-hand side, we have 300 minus 110 equals 2L. And that uh, is 190. So 190 is 2L. Now we want to divide, or swap sides so that we can get the pronumeral by itself on the left-hand side. We can do that at any time. And now we need to divide by two so that L, or 1L, is 190 divided by 2, which is 95 centimetres. With example 4, you will need a calculator. I've got one on the screen there. And we need to, again, apply this to the real world. So the diagram there represents two electric plates, one positively charged, the other negatively charged. The blue lines with arrows represent an electric field that goes between those two plates, and then there's a charge, which is positive, and that's that yellow circle. Here's the question. A particle with an electric charge of Q equals 7.45 times 10 to the negative 4 coulombs, and that's the units for measuring charge, is placed in an electric field and a force of F equals 8.75 times 10 to the negative 2 newtons, and those are the units of measurement for force, acts on the particle. Using the formula E equals F over Q, find the field strength E at that point. So, real world example. Write down the formula. E equals F on Q. R substitute the values that are in the question. So F is 8.75 times 10 to the negative 2, and that's over 7.45 times 10 to the negative 4. And then use the calculator. Now with the calculator, these two numbers are written in scientific notation, and it should be fairly easy to enter them into the calculator. Depending on your calculator, the one I've got on the screen uses a button called EXP, 
uh, other calculators would use a button that is labelled 10 with a power of X. It saves typing. So 8.75 EXP button, negative 2. And that will enter the first number. When you do that and calculate it, you end up with 117 rounded, so the nearest whole number. And I've put units there, capital N, capital C to the negative 1. And that stands for the units Newtons per Coulomb. Don't need to know that for uh, substituting, but we will need to know if we're going to do real world examples with units. In brackets, I've put three significant figures. So you can see the 1, the 1, and the 7 are three different digits. They're all significant, and we'll get more familiar with what that means a little later. But essentially, we've rounded what the calculator gave, which is on the screen, with its long decimal places, and we've rounded it to three significant figures. Well, that was all about substituting into mathematical expressions to find a value. In our next video, we'll be solving linear equations. I'm Mr. Mack. Thanks for watching.